What is up everybody and welcome back to another installation of Tattoo Critiques. I'm your boy, Pony Lawson, Pony Pie. And what we like to do here is talk about tattoos, whether you're an artist, collector, or just a creep who likes to watch. We like to talk about them all. This week we're doing collectors as we did artists last week, so let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Alright, first up we've got a tattoo sent in from Tim Sutphin. Tim, you sent in this rather large tattoo of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You say it's your favorite game, uh, and this tattoo is badass. We don't get to see a lot of large scale tattoos like this on this channel, so it's very cool to see. Uh, there's a lot to break down, so let's get right into it. First, let's start with composition. The composition on this tattoo is outstanding. Uh, near the bottom, you've got all the front focal points, everything that's standing in the front, and then as we go up toward the top of the tattoo, that's where we get to the castle, and everything kind of just disappears into the distance. You kind of have this perspective of being behind Link, you know, when he's defending himself against the Guardian, and the Guardian's legs themselves wrap all the way around your arm, uh, and it just really gives this tattoo uh, a lot of movement. You know, your eye really moves around the entire piece because there's so much to see here. The amount of things that the artist managed to stuff into this tattoo and do it very well is exceptional. You know, down to the Hyrule Sword at the bottom, you've got the little Triforce logo in there, along with these little flowers that uh, are done very well. You've got this glowing piece on the Guardian. You know, the artist decided to use a uh, red or scarlet outline, and then he outlined it again with white, so it really gives it that glowing effect. Even the Guardian's eye itself has this light that's coming out of it that's outlined with a blue and then that blue is outlined with a white really making it seem like that light is emitting from the guardian the artist set up this tattoo uh, in a way to almost tell a story you know you've got the castle sitting in the back that establishes a location it kind of lets you know where he's at and lets you know the journey that he's on he's fighting his way through the guardian to get up to the castle so uh, again this tattoo really has it all even the details that the artist decided to put into the front arm of this guardian the little scratches and nicks and things like that it really just helps the viewer uh, feel like that is coming at you where the other arm is kind of pushed back you know it doesn't have as much details so like we've seen on other tattoos on this channel uh, it's just those those sharp lines the bolder lines coming in front help things sit closer to you whereas the thin lines maybe muted colors kind of help things get pushed back the only thing I'm not really a huge fan of is his little hair tuft that he's got going on in front uh, it kind of just seems like it's very puffy and then goes back into a strand of hair not exactly sure what's going on there but I can overlook that with everything else that's going on in this tattoo. So thank you so much, Tim, for sending that in. This has been a pleasure to view. All right, the next tattoo is sent in from Lizzie Kane. Lizzie, you sent in this chess piece that you said you're not super thrilled with and you're likely not going to go back to the artist that started it. You mentioned that it feels one-dimensional and you'd like to know a direction to kind of go in to help it give it some pop or just some extra flair. Okay, I'm gonna point out some things that I like about the tattoo and some things that I don't like about the tattoo and we'll see if there's something that we can do to kind of help spruce this thing up. The first thing that I like about this tattoo is the color orange that you've got in the dead center of this tattoo. I like the choice of pink that the artist used for the other flowers in the back, but I do think that they are missing some details as well. You know, smaller lines, maybe some stronger pink, just to help give it that pop. So the main part about this tattoo that I'm not a fan of are these jumbled leaves that are kind of just sitting in here taking up space. Maybe adding some solid black, some deeper greens, maybe some stronger lines, this can really look a, a, a lot cleaner than where it's sitting right now. Granted, it's not going to have that nice flow had this been a nice clean canvas, but it's still going to look a lot better than where it's sitting currently. I do wish there were some smaller lines in this flower, something to give it a general direction of where those petals are sitting, because right now they're kind of coming off a bit flat. The blue in the background could also use some darker blue, maybe some blue concentrate, just to kind of liven it up a bit. But overall, I think it's just lacking some line weight, some line work overall, and just some nice saturated colors. It should be fairly easy to find an artist that does this kind of style that will make this that much better. Just make sure to check their portfolio and make sure they've done some sort of rework or repairs and that they actually know what they're doing before you get yourself into a bigger mess than you're already in. So thank you so much, Lizzie, for sending that in. I hope it works out for you. I got my hash pipe. All right, next up, we've got a tattoo sent in from Kimberly Woodman. Ah, the yellow fabric from the destroyed sweater. Kimberly, you must really like Weezer. Going back to the blue album. Truly a fan. Kidding. I've done enough Wonder Woman tattoos to know that this is a Wonder Woman tattoo with the lasso of truth. So normally the Wonder Woman logo is supposed to feel uh, metal, shiny, or reflective, whereas this logo kind of just seems like it's made of wood. And I say that just because of these lines that are kind of running through it, it doesn't give it that shiny metal appearance. The lines themselves are kind of just adding a little texture. The shading in the background, I'm not really a huge fan of. It kind of just seems to be put in there to help brighten that yellow, where I think the yellow could have benefited from having some sort of outline on there. It looks like there was a gray wash outline around the yellow, 
but it just falls a little weak in comparison to the outline around the Wonder Woman logo itself. It might even have benefited the tattoo just to have more dark, more black in the background. It would have helped that yellow seem that much more bright and vivid. It would have been nice to see some sort of a glow coming from that lasso as well. As we saw with the Zelda tattoo, had this lasso had some sort of yellow bold outline around it and then maybe a white outline or shade out from that outline, it really would have made it seem like this lasso is glowing. But as it sits, it just doesn't have that real true glow effect. And some of these lines on the right side of the tattoo just feel a little rushed or shaky. They're running into each other in some spots. Uh, it could just be cleaner. So overall, it's a bright and vivid tattoo. I would just maybe add some more blacks, some darks to the background just to give it some more pop. There's not a whole lot you can do to remedy those lines on the inside. I would just own it. Maybe tell people it's made of bamboo. Thanks a lot, Kimberly, for sending that in and let me talk about it. All right, next tattoo sent in is from Wilbur Smith. And Wilbur, you sent this Where the Wild Things Are tattoo. That's pretty cool. I love the approach that the artist took with this tattoo, with the lines showing the flow of movement. And in doing so, it really kept it as close to the reference as possible. You've got these nice hatch shades that are running through the claws, the feet, the horns, the striped portion of his body, the face. Everything has a purpose, and it genuinely feels like the character from the book. I think the artist has a great understanding of illustration, of where to put those whites and it just looks good overall. I really like this tattoo. There's not a whole lot I would change. So thank you so much, Wilbur, for sending that in. All right, next tattoo sent in is from Paul. And Paul, you sent in a couple characters from Dragon Ball Z. Um, you mentioned their names. I'm probably gonna butcher them. Nala and Vegeta? I don't know. Aside from me not having knowledge about Dragon Ball Z, let's talk about the tattoo. Initially, right off the bat, not a huge fan of this tattoo. I'm not really certain why, but it just seems like the colors are a little muddy. It's just not well put together. It seems like a lot of the white highlights are just put in here randomly, especially when we look at her cheek. There's just this white patch that doesn't really belong. The white and blue glove kind of just looks muddy. Some of the outlines look like they've been covered up with some other color because they're not very strong in black anymore. You know, if we look up towards the top of his head, it seems like some of those outlines got covered with some of that yellow. So it just kind of loses that strength that it once had. The blue in the body kind of just seems patchy. You know, it doesn't really seem like it's coming from any one direction. Normally as an artist, we would shade from the darker part working our way to the light. So we would find our shadow areas and then we would work from our dark blues over to our light blues. Uh, if I look at this, it kind of just looks like it was put in all at once. Similar to her dress, it's all kind of just flat with some random white highlights. There's no real shape. It seems like there are a couple spots on this tattoo where the outlines are very strong, but most of them just fall short. On their faces, as you can see, there's a lot of control with these lines, you know, around her mouth, around his chin, mouth, nose, and forehead. Uh, you can just tell that the artist knows what they're doing when it comes to that part in specific. But I feel like it just gets a little lost, you know, when we come down to the bottom of her arm, to the bottom of his hand and glove. Those are those lines that just don't have as much strength as they do in the faces. Overall, I feel like you could use some black in the entire tattoo, mainly in their bodies, to give them some shape, some stronger outlines, and maybe even a splash of color in the background just to help it pop. So thank you so much, Paul, for sending that in. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this week's critiques. But before we go, I want to talk about my favorite tattoo of the episode, which was sent in from Tim Sutton with this Breath of the Wild Legend of Zelda sleeve. You know, initially I was so wrapped up in this tattoo, I thought it was on an arm, but it's actually on a leg, which to me makes this tattoo even more impressive. This tattoo really does have it all, and I would be super stoked to wear this. The composition, all the little details, this tattoo really tells a story. So Tim, if you haven't already, I'd send this artist a nice care package because this tattoo is dope. And congrats again on being this week's winner. Now that all the hard work's over, let's talk about my featured artist of the week. For this week's feature, I wanted to showcase an artist who really excels at line weight and color saturation, two things that we talk a lot about on this channel. And that artist is Adam Purgetel, who goes by Purge Tattoos on Instagram. Purge mainly focuses on animated tattoos, video game and TV characters, but certainly not limited to. Adam's work truly shows how different line weights work well together. His big bold outlines as well as his smaller thinner outlines paired well with his color saturation really just make his tattoos extraordinary. So make sure you stop by his profile, check out his work, and let him know I sent you. So once again, thank you guys so much for sending in your work and allowing me to view it on this channel. For all of those wondering why I haven't got to yours yet, there are a lot of emails and I think we were a bit ambitious in trying to get through all of them, but they're still there and we're still trying. So don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video with your friends and more importantly, hit that notification bell so you can be notified when our next video goes up. Thanks again. See y'all next week.